isn't that just stunning two rods out at the moment one with a pulley panel with razor clam which I dug up last week The other rod has got a two hook flapper, both with frozen lug. I was planning to dig some lug yesterday and I did go down to the mark, but we're on that really annoying in between time now, between the, 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 the big spring tides. So it meant that I couldn't really dig worms and where I could, there wasn't many casts to dig. So frozen black lug will hopefully do the job. At the end of the day, you know, if you, if you don't get a fish, at least, you, at least you've been out and about and you just witnessed this absolutely beautiful morning. Now I'll be honest, this mark has never been too productive for me. In the summer I've had some small mackerel and uh, one bass. But it's a great mark, it's closest to my house and it's easy to get to. So my plan is always, from book for sunrise session and I can't be bothered to go that far, this is the place I come. For others, they say it's been really productive. That's just part of fishing, isn't it? You gotta go where you, where you can go. And if you catch, you catch. If you if you blank, you blank. So all we can really do at the moment is keep our fingers crossed. I hope we get some fish. Just show you guys what I have in terms of my rod and reel setup. Now, on the left rod, I've got a Daiwa Surfcast 15 foot. This is the rod I'll usually use the pulley panels on, things like that. Essentially, distance casting rigs. The reason is, the rod can cast up to 8 ounce. I can cast further with probably a 6 ounce lead. And that extra length I find it's easy to get that, that further casting distance. On that, I've got a Pen Wraith 8000 reel with 30 pound mono and a 50 pound shock leader. Now, the reason I got the 50 pound on, not a 60 pound, is on this 30 pound line, I find the 60 pound essentially just makes too big of a knot and it always gets caught, uh, caught up when I'm reeling. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll probably use a different reel if I'm going to use a heavier line. I've got another reel which has got, or another spool, sorry, which has got a 45 pound line on it. And then I'll often put a 60 or 70 pound shock leader. And that's for fish like bullhuss, conger eel, essentially anything bigger. Maybe a tote, maybe I could put a heavier line on it and then I could use uh, certain bite traces and things like that. On the other rod, I've got a 12 foot Mitchell. Now it's, it's a Mitchell 362, I actually got given this rod. It's an old rod, but it does the job perfect. The reason the tape is just the real seat is broken, taped it up, does the job. You don't need anything fancy. If you want to catch fish, something basic will do the job. Obviously the better the tools, the easier you, you might find that process. It doesn't mean it's impossible. On that, I've got a really cheap reel. Now that reel, I think, was twenty pounds. It was one of the first reels I got when I started beach casting. We were using beach casters, rock fishing, especially with using bait, and that does the job. Now that can be very plasticky. Um, it doesn't feel as sturdy as the pen. Obviously, pe pen's a good quality reel, and the pen just does an exceptional job of casting. The bait arm can be a bit funny, but. It does the job for me. I, I'm, I'm not too fussed. On that, I've got really, really cheap line, 30 pound line, again, with a 50 pound shock leader. Some people say, oh, you know, you should never use this line, cheap line, it's rubbish. It's caught me fish. I've never had a problem. I think a lot of the time people can think, oh, you know, you, you, need, you need the absolute best. The best probably helps, but in my opinion, 
if you can set off a mediocre, you can sort of treat your rods as almost replaceable. Because if I have a 300 pound rod and I break that, I'm gutted. But if I have a 50 pound rod and I break that, I can get another one. That's my logic uh, as well. I don't like spending too much. But there we go. So yeah, that's just general the setup and the uh, tripod then is an icon. I can't even remember the name of that. Well, it's a general medium size rod stand. It's great for rock fishing. It's great for on the beach for me, to be honest, it's general all purpose. Sometimes <coughs> I like to take the, the bottom seats off and just have it on the ground. So a lot, a lot of the time if I'm on the rocks as well and I, I want to fish at night and I want to put bell um, it's on the rod tips, it's just, it's just far easier. So yeah, that's my setup. Now, from that, I can tell you there are definitely, definitely crabs here as they've absolutely minced my bait. So, what I'll do to compensate is faster bait changes. Leave them out. I left that one out 20 minutes. It's come back in with very, very little on. They, I can tell that they've been nibbling at it. So, what I'll do is cut that down by five minutes now. I'll go 15 minutes. Next time I'll assess it, if there's a bit left on, I could possibly leave it longer. But I'd rather fresh bait going out there than no bait at all. Say for example I left that 20 minutes, I'm fishing for five minutes with no bait on the hook. There's, there's no point in that being out there. It's basically decorating the sea. So 15 minutes change, 15 minutes change. Now with this, the bait I'm using today, if I can show you, this is all razor that I've collected last week. Now these are good size razor. You know, some of this is absolutely enormous. I think there's two there. Yeah, two, two there. This is absolutely cracking bait. Defrosts very quickly. And if there are birds about, be careful because they want your bait just as much as you want to fish with it. So just be aware of that if you are using razor. Keep it in a bag and keep it underneath something. But I, I keep it underneath my flask. So, just one tip, look after your baits. Now, I just wanted to show you this bait. This is stunning. This was a lug I dug last week. Look at the size of that. That's, that's a snake, that is. <laughs> now, it has been frozen, and I, I froze it and preserved it myself. But I remember digging this and thinking, Jesus Christ, look at how big that is. You know, it's probably from the tip of my finger to, I don't know, four or five inches up my arm. The reason I've shown you is a lot of people say, oh, a lot of the, the local stuff is frozen and they go for the um, imported stuff. I think that just proves that wrong. What a stunning bait. So we fished quite a large number of baits. We probably had four bait changes in total. I can only spend probably two hours this morning. That time is now coming to an end. We haven't had perfect conditions. We have been fishing an outgoing tide. It's still quite early in the year. And as, as well as that, we only have had you know the, the freshest baits, but that is just part of fishing. You know, you've got to get, you've got to get those downs to get those up. So, in this same video as this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a session from last week where uh, I had an absolutely stunning flounder down in Tempe South. So what I'll do is I'll throw you guys over to that video now and hopefully you can enjoy some good highlights. Down Tempe North Beach, um, big spring tide tonight, really big tides. 
tide is absolutely flying at some pace and what we're going to be doing is fishing for ideal bass with uh, the possibility for flatfish. This is a good flatfish venue down here. Flat surf beach all the way out and as you can see it's quite a bit of surf in the water. It's a perfect night. The only downfall is there's an easterly wind. We are shaded here but you know fish from wind from the east, fish bite the least so we're going to put that theory to the test. So what we, what we do, one rod out at the moment on two hook flapper Fishing with the lugworm, which I uh, caught myself earlier, dug myself. Uh, you know, some of it's, some, some a couple of it's bought, but the uh, lug I bought, is apt, the lug I caught, sorry, or, or dug, is absolutely massive. So we're gonna put that to the test. Really fresh bait, and uh, just hope we get some fish. Don't strike too hard. On? Yeah, I think there's something on. I don't know what though. Nice. I hope so you get it in. I have an issue while bringing it up though. Something's on. Can't get my in the water though. Nice, yeah. Keep the tension on, that's it loose. Is it not? Nope. Oh yes! Oh lovely! <laughs> so Lucy's just had this gorgeous little flounder. Hey, he's quite big. <laughs> there you go. He was caught on oh, lugworm on the two hook flapper. Yeah, nice. Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a lively one. <laughs> so this is stun of a little flounder Lucy had. We've actually kept this one, hence mm -hmm. the blood. It was it was uh, really deep hooked, so uh, we couldn't pull it back. It was a bit of a mess. So we're going to keep that one. Dinner. Now, uh, we caught that on the lug that we had bought, but this is the lug that we've actually caught ourselves today. Now, look at some of the size of these. They're lovely. Yeah, look at the size of them. Ooh. Fresh Pembrokeshire lug dug by her. Uh, the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bought stuff, so keep that there. And hopefully we'll have a few more fish. Can we do? Mm-hmm. It's quietened off now. We've had just that flounder. No bites in the past 20, 30 minutes. So I think we're gonna change up some rigs. The aim was bass, but we're quite happy with that flounder, aren't we? So Beats the blank. What we'll do is change up the rigs. If we're off land, we're about we may as well make the most of it. And uh, we're going to fish into the sunset, maybe 20 minutes after, and then call it a day. 